We've looked at four standard types of reactions. Now we're going to start looking at what happens in water because many of these chemical reactions are occurring in water and we need to see what different compounds do when you put them in water. This first definition, electrolyte, it has to do with a, conducting a current. If you put a compound in water, does it conduct an electrical current? We're not really interested in the electricity. What we are interested in is in order for this to occur, in order to have an electrolyte, you need to have ions in solution. So if you have ions, then that substance is an electrolyte. Now you get ions in water. First of all, you could have an ionic compound that forms ions in water, or you could have an acid or base that form ions in water. Those are your, your possibilities. So let's look at the ionic compounds first. If an ionic compound dissolves in water, it must ionize in order to do so. So ionic compounds that are soluble form ions and they are considered electrolytes. Sodium chloride, of course, dissolves in water. This is table salt. So when we show it dissolving in water, we're going to break it apart into the two ions. We're going to be real picky about state symbols in this chapter particularly because that will be important for seeing what's happening um, with the different chemical reactions. Because it breaks apart into ions, this is an electrolyte. Here's what it looks like. Here's a crystal of the sodium chloride. When you put it into water, it totally breaks up apart into ions. These ions can conduct an electric current. That's why it's called an electrolyte but um, what we're interested in, in is that they exist as ions in solution. This is a strong electrolyte because it totally or completely ionizes. In other words, 100% of the sodium chloride is in the ion form when it's in water. Sometimes you have ionic compounds that don't ionize when you put them in water. And when that happens, they're not water soluble. For example, um, silver chloride, um, when you put it in water, it does not break apart. In fact, the opposite thing ha happens. If you put these two ions into water, by th and these would have to be added from some different compounds. But if you had these floating around in water, they would find each other and form the solid. So the opposite reaction occurs. This occurs because um, the silver and the chloride ions are very attracted to each other. So not only will they not break apart, but if they are apart, they're going to find each other and form that solid. This S, it's a little off there, that S means solid. It means it's insoluble. If it's in water. So sometimes people get confused and they start wanting to say the S means soluble. It's actually the opposite. It means solid, so it's insoluble. Here's how this looks. Here are the ions um, put into solution. They're, again, we have to do some, use some other compounds to get them in solution. But they are there. They will find each other and form that solid. Um, this you will see. It will be a crystal sitting on the bottom or maybe small crystals all floating throughout um, that make it look cloudy. So is sodium or silver chloride an electrolyte? No. It does not ionize. look at molecular compounds. Remember these are the covalent compounds, the non-metal compounds. When you put these in water, they do not produce ions. They can just, even if they do dissolve, sucrose definitely dissolves. This is table sugar. 
So it does dissolve, but it does not form ions to do that. So it is dissolved, but it does not form any ions, so it is um, a non-electrolyte. There's an exception to this. Um, acids and bases can form ions anyway. They can act a little bit ionic when you put them in water, very ionic sometimes when you put them in water. We'll talk about those exceptions a little bit more later. So is sucrose an electrolyte? No. So we would say sucrose is a non-electrolyte. 